from Alderman Farms. I'm going to show you a little quick tip on how I make cream of mushroom soup. I've already strained my mushrooms and I poured them in the food processor. I actually forgot to plug in my microphone. So anyway, you didn't get to see that process. I also have a stick of butter here in the pan that's melted. I'm just going to pulse the food processor. Uh oh, my little thing fell out of it. I'm just going to pulse it right quick to kind of chop my mushrooms. I think you can buy mushrooms already chopped. These were some that I had picked up for pizza if we wanted to do pizza. I'm just going to pulse that a little bit. We like mushrooms, so if they're not chopped up super fine, it's not a real big deal to us. I'm just going to saute them a little bit in this pan, in the butter. tablespoon of flour. This is my gluten-free flour. You can use regular flour if you're not gluten-free. Hope you're not gluten-free. Hope you don't have to be. I'm going to put about a cup of milk in here. This flour and the milk uh, is going to thicken it and I'm probably going to end up adding a little more milk because uh, I use that whole, whole jar of uh, mushrooms. So. lumpy side. We have a little bitty whisk. Let's see if I can. There it is. And this is good. This recipe should make about me about two cans of cream and mushroom soup for me. About a, I think about a cup and a half is what's in a can of cream and mushroom soup. Stir this up. As it heats, it should thicken. And you know, if I haven't used enough flour, if it's not thick, getting thick enough, I can always add a little more milk and flour to it. Or you can also use Argo cornstarch. And I'm really, I'm not making this for us to just eat it like this. I wouldn't want to eat it like that. Tommy would. He likes cream of mushroom soup like that. But I guess I need to add a little salt to it anyway for the recipe that I'm putting it in. I'm making some poppy seed chicken today. My daughter's home. And that's one of her favorites. It's supposed to be a quick tip and it's not as quick as the... Let's see, I'm already running three minutes here. But, uh... Anyway, it's quicker than going to the grocery store, especially for me, because I'm about 15 minutes away from town. And even if you live in town, if you have the ingredients, it's quicker than running to the grocery store. You know, they say a watch pot never boils. I'm trying to get the, trying to get to come on up there, and it's just seems like it's just sitting. So you see I have a, some smaller chunks, but then there are some bigger chunks in there. But like I said, my family, there's a big one. It doesn't matter with my family because we like mushrooms. If you're making it for somebody that don't really care for mushrooms, I guess you'd want to make sure they're all chopped up pretty small. Kind of hide them in there. Alright, it's starting to thicken up a little bit. My fire's starting to get red. My burner's starting to get red now. And I don't make my soup typically as thick as what gets dumped out of the can, which of course, you know, that's condensed. So. Yeah, that's getting really thick now. Add some more milk to it. 
I poured it in this cup because there was a little flour on the bottom of it just to get it out. And this is still going to have a lot of mushrooms in it. Well, I've made it a little on the thin side now, but anyway, it'll thicken up as it gets warmer again. The other half I just freeze, and it comes out of the freezer just fine. And like I said, if I've added too much milk, I can always add a little cornstarch to it, or I can put a little more. I, what I would do is I'd take a little bit of milk, or I could scoop a little bit of this out and mix a little bit more flour with it. But that's the way I do it here on Alderman Farms, my cream and mushroom soup. And you know, as it cools, it'll get thin, it'll get thicker too. So. Anyway, better remove that from the stove and better get it hidden before Tommy comes to the kitchen and gets some.